going on everybody? This is Slick and Nick from Breaking the Clutch back with another Micro Concepts video. This one is going to be a little bit more in-depth and advanced. Uh, these concepts are not something that you can just pick up overnight. These are things you're going to want to learn and practice for a good amount of time before you really get them down in matchmaking. So guys, for the first advanced concept we will be talking about today is actually called paint spreading. Now, this one I had to kind of make up my own uh, title for just because, uh, I mean, I guess no other RTS really has this because there aren't very many console RTSs. Um, so essentially what paint spreading is is say this tool I'm using right now when you hold down the A button on the default settings You have this big open circle and it's actually called the paint tool or the paintbrush tool um, And the idea behind paint spreading is just that what you do is say in the event of a very uh, Say scary engagement like for this one we're gonna be using suicide grunts What you do instead of just sitting there head-on just losing all units You actually say quickly just paint some units here and there and then you actually spread out in like all directions And what that does is it causes suicide grunts to split up on all ends now, I'm going to try to show you here again exactly what I'm talking about. So I have this big ball of units. Suicide grunts are coming in. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What we're going to do is just kind of dance all my units around just like that. It's kind of like unit dancing, except, you know, your number one goal is just to get everything so whack-ass spread out that, uh, let's say, the suicide grunts aren't going to be able to do much anything. Of course, as a lot of you guys know, uh, suicide grunts do absolutely melt uh, normal grunts or basically any basic infantry, including marines. So, of course, if Nick were just to walk four suicide grunts in here, I'd lose a lot of units. But, of course, like I said, one more time just to show you. I'll do it a little more slowly here. I have, like, I hold down the paintbrush tool very briefly here. See, so it just, like, because if you hold down for a long time, you get a big circle. If you kind of briefly tap it here, of course, like I said, this is going to take a lot of practice. You get a smaller circle. So, suicide grunts are coming in this direction. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to just kind of walk around like that and kind of spread all my units out like that. And the suicide grunts are going to have to pick a side, and all my other units can just kind of attack them at the same time. Uh, Nick, do you have suicide grunts in the middle? Ready, ready, little bit. Of course, guys, so this will work, say, for spirit drops in particular, say, with Shipmaster. Uh, the spirit drop right here, he can actually, or spirit support, sorry. When a spirit flies in and drops off some units, uh, a lot of times skilled players will actually use that in 1v1s, 2v2s, 2v3s, on top of infantry units. So what you can do is the second you see, if you see a spirit drop drop in the middle there, you kind of just move all units around like this, and then you just kind of engage it like this, and then all units attack, you know? So that it's, it takes a lot of practice, like I said, and you're going to have to be real quick with your fingers, get used to, like I said, just using the paintbrush tool at its small uh, at its smallest point, and then spreading units. So... Uh, and also, you aren't always going to be ready to react in time, so one of the biggest recommendations I can have is just constantly trying to look at your army and see what's going on. So Nick, go ahead and uh, send those suicide grunts up the ramp. We're going to practice this here. So since the suicide grunts are probably going to contact this point, uh, I'm actually going to try to micro all of my army around that and kind of just sacrifice one of my units here. So Nick's going to come walking in here, I'm actually going to start spreading my units out like this. See that? He's immediately going to attack that, and then he has to kind of choose which one to take. And say, if I were just to, like, sacrifice my unit, like, I'm still doing it, still microing around, look at that. So I actually only lost seven grunts there. And the concept, actually, look, this guy, look at this bastard here. He was like, fuck this noise, I'm actually just going to go get these supply crates. So, in particular, with that play there, uh, you spread all your units out as best you can away from the point of trajectory at which the suicide grunts are coming. And then what you do is uh, you just kind of micro your units away. So... After that, we're going to be moving on to concaves, which actually uses a piece of paint spreading uh, in the science behind it. All right, guys, so this next concept that I'm going to be showing you is actually, uh, it's called the concave. Uh, essentially, what you do is you make it so every single one of your units in a big engagement, say with a lot of units, can attack the enemy at the same time. Uh, essentially, like say when you think of the word concave, the first letter is C. That's essentially what you do, is you create a giant C around uh, your, your enemy units. You kind of wrap them. And it, uh, it definitely, it, it, like I said, it allows every single one of your units to attack the enemy at the same time. Um, now, of course, we are going to be using basic grunts here, so it's definitely going to be different. In a real engagement in the middle of a game, when you have an army composition of all different kinds of units and such, uh, it's going to be a lot more effective. But for this example, I'd at least like to show you, say, what I do is I, pen I paint spread, then I kind of just surround an army, say, just like this. It's very, very simple here, just like this. So what I have here is I have all of my units, if the army is right here for the enemy team, all of my units here are in like a little C position just to kind of engage it. Get all my units here stacked up. All right, Nick, you mind standing on the left side of the circle there? I'll consider it. Okay, so here is Nick's army. What I'm going to do, just like I said, is just kind of create this little C around him. And then what I'm going to do here is just surround him just like this. And we'll see. I'm not even going to focus fire. I'm just going to see how we do in the engagement. Of course, you see a lot of one-shot units there from Nick. Nick's units are spread out all over the place, kind of shooting 
in all different directions here. Now, Nick, we had an even army here of 13 versus 13. Yep. And of course, um, as we're getting a little closer here, you can actually still get the concave going on here. But just like this, and I'm starting to get veterancy. This, of course, is a little holes in my, a couple holes in my concave here. But oh, survive, you little bastard, the little elite that could. No, oh, he just died. And Pat, what are, what this also does, is it split. It makes the other units turn around. So that exactly. way they can't just go from one to one to one. They have to go from one to a 180, attack the next one, do another 180 if they kill that unit. So spreading out that time in which they, they deal the DPS. Exactly that. And just like you said, because they have to slowly train to each unit, so it takes a good amount of time to do so. All right. So that's a pretty easy one, like I said. So what you're going to want to do, like I said, is just practice, uh, practice your concave or your paint spread as much as possible. So that way you're able to just kind of just spread all the way around the units and create a little C. And uh, it will most certainly help you out in those engagements. So for this quick concept here, I'm actually going to be showing you how to tele-stack units. Now what tele-stacking is, is actually forcing all of your units into a tight ball uh, in order to get them all into a teleporter ring. So of course I have a teleport here, but of course, uh, say if I were just to say select this side right here, I'm going to miss a couple units. Of course, if I get all these guys in here, it's a little tough to squeeze. Um, say if I'm trying to do this really quick, I'm like, oh shit, I need to get out of an engagement, teleport my units away. So I hit X over here, right? Then I'm going to hit teleport. You're not always going to be able to look at this. See, there's a big gap there and it takes a couple seconds for them to manually get in line. So for this concept, what we're going to do is kind of force them manually to get all into a big stack. Now I've seen some people think you just can do it like this, where you kind of hit X and you just keep smashing it. And then the units kind of file in, which is sometimes the case. See like one little unit right there, just like that. And then they're all, they're all over the place again. Like look at all the gaps here. It's a little crazy. So what you need to do again is once again, practice your painting here. What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of move all of our grunts here in the center here, just at the same time, kind of pull them all together just like this. And then when they're all moving, what you do is then you teleport them away, just like that. So I actually, I only missed two there out of the 17 grunts that I have, which is solid. Um, and that is going to be a quick way to do it. Of course, I see it all the time, especially with bigger units like locusts, wraith tanks. If you're trying to teleport away, it's not nearly as uh, as easy. Because say they take up just so much space. If you do it with wraith tanks in particular, say what you can do is just kind of force their noses in together like this. You can do it single, a couple units here, like I said, paintbrush, da da da. And then what we're gonna do is actually extract out just like that. See that? So I got all these units back here extracting my base uh, just from teleport stacking. So that is another round of advanced micro tips. I hope you guys are excited about that. If you have any more micro concepts that you are interested in learning about, anything you need assist with in the basic RTS uh, stunt uh, side of the game, uh, keep in mind that a lot of you guys, at least we know for certain that a lot of you guys are Halo players at heart and not RTS players. So uh, if you are looking for the tips on how to get better, get that champ or Onyx rank, these advanced tips will most certainly help you there. Of course, like I said, also beginning of the video, these are not necessarily tips that you can learn overnight. You might have to practice them multiple times before you really get things down. So just keep keep grinding in custom games if you can. Play against AIs, do various things like that, and help your uh, gameplay a little bit better. Of course, with the concave concepts and uh, also the paint spreading concept, you can do, say, by yourself in a custom game. But concaves, what you're really going to want to do is go into a custom game versus a friend, so that way you can kind of spread your units out in the proper way, create that giant C, and then wrap units up. Nicholas, any final words to say before we close up? Is there a sexual joke with micro tips? I mean, I mean there could be. I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm not opposed. I think Preston's more okay with that. Anyways, guys, see you next time. That's right. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, of course, also share this video around if you know anybody else who is struggling with getting a little bit better at Halo Wars 2 or RTS games in general. Uh, this will most certainly at least help them out a little bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Slick and Nick from Breaking the Clutch, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!